Or you can join the conversation on Facebook, Twitter, and SMS. Our hashtag is NTV Tech 5. Get us on our Facebook page as well. That's NTV Uganda Fans page. Our SMS number is 6565. Remember to begin with Take 5. Welcome to NTV. Thank you. Good evening, viewers. Good to have you with us. Thank you. What is your, your assessment of the loss in uh, the Luero by-elections by NRM? Well, my assessment is that, uh, of course, it was unfortunate that we lost the seat. And uh, the loss did not indicate that NRM is not popular in Luero. That should be made clear. Okay. You know, for every election, there is always the message, the messenger, and the means of delivering the message. So when you analyze all those three factors, of course, there could have been issues. One, with the messenger. Two, with the message. Three, with the means of delivering the message. So as a party, we are analyzing all that, and uh, definitely. We call upon our supporters to remain calm. The party is taking all the necessary steps to make sure that all the loopholes that could have happened in uh, Luero uh, is not repeated in the next election. Could you shed some light on those loopholes? You say it's not because the NRM is not popular in Luero. What do you think caused the loss? I, I think mainly it's about, uh, of course, at the beginning of the race, there were a lot of concerns about the candidate. So many other members of the party picked up forms to be nominated to run. And so they wanted us to hold primary elections for the members. And of course, uh, we could not, be within the time limit that we had, could not go for a primary elections. And uh, we convinced other members to step down for the flag bearer. And that also brought a bit of tension among the members and the supporters. Two, of course, we realized that uh, there were issues in Luero that needed a proactive approach from the party secretariat and the party leadership well ahead of the elections. And then such issues were not adequately addressed and they caught up with us during the elections. And of course, there are certain challenges of inter internal contradictions among leaders that played against us. So you do agree uh, co some of the comments coming through by senior uh, members of the NRM that possibly the reason why, one of the reasons why you lost was because of internal bickering? That could be one but not necessarily the ultimate reason. It, it, it's one of the reasons, yes. How about the youth feeling ignored? Do you think that that is a reason as well? Well, you see, being a youth is a transitional stage. That's what the young people should know. Today you are youth, tomorrow you are moving into something else. You are not going to be a youth permanently. And being involved, you don't need to be invited to be involved. When you are a member of the party, when you are a member of an organization, and your organization is running for an election, you don't need to be invited. You need to just take on and you start moving around. But I think we, we need to do a little more work with the young people to ideologically ground them so that they are a little more compatible with the party and be sure that they support the party on principles. Otherwise, the way it appears is like they are also not sure of why they should belong to the party anyway. <laughs> so we, we, are, we are doing some bit of work of ideologically grooming them. There are reports that the campaign in Luero turned tribal and that some uh, members of the NRM were opposed to you. What do you have to say about that? <laughs> that is laughable. It is very interesting. One is that... Uh, the very reason why NRM launched the 1980 resistance was against sectarianism, tribalism, religious differences, and all those kind of forms. And Luero being the place where such move was launched, it was unfortunate that such words were coming from Luero. But nevertheless, it wasn't a big issue because uh, you don't need to be a particular tribe to campaign uh, to a particular people. Um, the opposition had all sorts of people going there to campaign. Why did it uh, work against them? I saw Otuno in Luero. I saw Mao in Luero. I saw other people who are not from Luero campaigning in Luero. I, I, during uh, uh, last month, I saw Bukenya in Gulu campaigning in Gulu University. He's not an actual. So I think politicians should stop being petty to that level. Mm -hmm. We need to jump to above rise above the bars, pettiness. Yeah. Away from the campaign, and let's talk a bit about the president meeting different youth groups. Why and why now? No, it's, it's, it's a routine. The president always meets different groups of people. Uh, you know, the NRM is structured in such a way that we have different leagues. 
we have the youth, we have the women, we have persons with disabilities, we have veterans, we have elders, we have historicals, we have so many other leaks. So if this month the president is meeting the youth, it is not to say it is not, it is, why is it now? Uh, definitely he will also meet other leaks when time uh, avails itself. But at the moment he's in interacting with the youth. He has started by meeting the youth from northern region. Mm -hmm. Today he met the youth from central region. Tomorrow is meeting the youth from the east, and on Wednesday is going to meet the youth from the west. So it's he's meeting them. Just the youth within the league. It is being interpreted as a divide and rule uh, policy by the president. What do you have to say about that? No, no, no. His meeting is uh, for all the, the leadership within the, the youth league. If you are a leader within the youth league, definitely you qualify for that meeting. And unfortunately, there are others who are mobilizers, others are supporters, others are volunteers. Others are youth leaders within the National Youth Council. Others are youth leaders within the National Students Movement. And so they also feel they are youth who should be met by the president. So I think the categorization of who should attend which meeting mm. also was not well placed to them. But I think we shall sort out that. Yeah. Finally, your reactions to allegations by some of the youth that they were beaten while they were trying to seek audience with the president. It's really unfortunate that... Uh, some of them could have been beaten or some of them could have been pushed. I, I really don't think anybody would intentionally beat or push young people who have interest to meet their president. The president is open to meet anybody. The president is free to meet anybody. Why would people be blocked? Because I've even seen in public meetings where security do try to push away people from coming to meet the president. He always tell them to let people feel free with him. So he's an open man. He's an open president. And so it's not necessary that people should always be blocked from meeting him. He might be open, but the people surrounding him are the ones who are hindering the youth from meeting him. Yeah, but of course there are certain meetings that are for specific categories of people. You don't need to force yourself if you're not part of that. Definitely there are specific people that should meet him for a specific reason. So if you don't belong to that category, definitely you are not supposed to force yourself in the meeting. And it doesn't warrant being beaten either not, way. Not, of course. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to Thank us. Thank you, and I wish you all the best. All right. Been talking to the Minister Without Portfolio and also the Acting General Secretary of the NRM, Mr. Richard Tuoduong, on NTV Take 5.